Hi, I'm back down at McNatt Construction. I got a call from Evan last night. He's feeling better and he is going to be working on steaming and bending one of the cells. And he invited me back down to watch the process live. So y'all were so interested and I'm incredibly interested to see this in action instead of just looking at the equipment. So he's getting some setup done and he's going to be back over and we're going to get some close-ups and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with what's been done so So this far. is one of the pieces that we bent already on that jig i'm letting it dry out I'm putting this clamp on just to keep it and that's what we're doing today yeah we're doing and one of these you just corrected me that's not a sill yeah this is going to be the top part of the window this piece will be like this across the top this piece will be inside here making up the top part of the window so that has to be very precise yeah and then and then the brick mold we have some bent brick mold the brick mold will go on so that's an outside yeah piece. yeah this this should go up behind the brick i think a little bit mm -hmm. and then your brick mold will be somewhere okay. in here so all these have to nest together very tightly yeah yep what are what are these little guys this is the window stop so there's this will be used for like the parting stop between the sashes so if this was like if this was your side of the window your weights would be in here and then one of these will fit in that right in there and one window one sash will slide on this part and the other one would slide okay on this side so this is brick mold that hasn't oh that's for the straight side yeah that's for the up and down up and down side the vertical yeah pieces. okay and then we have the sub sills and the sills down here the third one is over there these are all rough cut right now they'll be milled. Well, they're not bent yet they are bent they are yeah bent. they just have a they have a strange sort of bend to them oh i so, see they are almost like humped in the yeah, yeah it's a very so they're curved on two planes they're curved this this curve but then they're also curved this basically way, yeah bit. kind of mm -hmm. it's yeah it's cut this way mm -hmm. and then it's bent this way which which ends up making it mm -hmm. sit flat once it's cut it actually will sit this part will be very flat too okay but it has to be like that so is that yeah. the most complicated one i would def i would think so okay. yeah then the kind of the frames or patterns you use yeah these the we bending. call them jigs. jigs these are the jigs that we use i'm also going to double double use these jigs they were used to steam bend on top of here but then also this radius, uh, we're going to end up, so this, this is your sub sill. This is the last sub sill that I did. We'll put it on here. As you can see, this, this isn't a, correct. So you'll do a finished cut. Yeah, cut we have, this is the pattern. yeah, it's over here. We have this flush cut bit, so it has a bearing down there, and that'll run so you'll along clamp there. Clamp that to that jig, and then run that plywood up against, against the bearing here, which will create the pattern and cut the piece on top to the correct. Yeah, shape. to a, a, a nice ninety. And then this is also, I don't know if you see it in my mess here, this is a, a long radius jig that was made to, I'll probably end up using it to cut the inside part of this because it's so, so high, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to use that bit to do this part. I'd have to make another jig and like do it upside down or something. So probably this is adjustable so I, I can real easily cut whatever size radius I need to. This was also used to cut 
these pieces. Okay. Because this radius, obviously, it has to be a smaller radius to do that. You yes, can't we, cut this we and that. Yes, we experienced that, that yeah, with, with the, the lentils. Yeah. <laughs> the, the geometry. We had a yeah. geometry lesson that you, it's not the same. So here I can just, I can drill a hole wherever I want on this piece and adjust it to whatever di uh, radius we need. Okay. These this are really nice. Toy. Oops, so those are solid brass. Solid brass. Those are beautiful. They look a little better than the ones that came out. Smooth, super smooth. smooth. I'm afraid to ask what those cost. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm wouldn't sure know, so build. you'd have I'm to sure ask I'll someone else. I'll find out. <laughs> and then we have the... Uh, window locks. These are really, these are the nicest ones I've ever seen, and besides like antique ones. Nowadays it's hard to find quality. It's, oh yeah, gorgeous. That's that part, and then this part has a really nice. Not what you'd buy at a big box store. You know, no, all solid brass, there's some steel like spring pieces spring in here that tension steel. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, I'm impressed with your uh, knife action there. I might have to get a close up of that. <laughs> My butterfly knife. Wait, wait. Let me zoom in on you. Hold on. Okay, do that again. Okay. I'm a not pencil impressed. sharpener. All right. It could be in a kung fu movie. <laughs> So yeah. it's been it's been in that bag. Let yeah, for a little it. while. I like to soak them as long as I can. This one didn't get a long time, but we're not doing. It's a pretty gradual bend. For and it's not a super super thick piece of wood. This piece of metal on top we use to do what's called a compression bend. So anytime you bend something that has thickness to it one side has to give either either the outside has to stretch or the inside has to compress mm -hmm. and it might not be too big of a problem with this size uh radius but if we pull this down it's gonna it's gonna force the outside layer to stretch and then it will probably pull it apart and you'll get like little splinter kind of things sticking out so if we put this metal it's cut precisely to go on either side mm -hmm. this as i clamp this down it will not allow the wood to stretch the metal is not going to stretch i have stretched so it metal forces, it forces compression yeah so they call so it you a compression. Get forced compression and no stretching yeah so the the, the bottom side of the wood goes in instead go of in. the outside okay. getting that's, pulled right. out that's really fascinating to me yeah geometry is a, a fun one and then i got a center line here i can just line up this is also cut bigger in at least two dimensions is cut bigger so we can have room to adjust so if you had started at this gets back to our geometry and the curve. If you started with the exact right length, but you're in compression, you'd end up slightly shorter, potentially. Probably, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's hard to know, you know, but probably it just it's best to have you know extra. a little bit more, especially you know when we go to install it. Just you know, I can scribe or whatever I need to to get it to the size because. No window. So let's talk about installation. So you had mentioned a lot of work will be done on site. So will that final cutting to size be done on site when you have the sashes available to fit? This or? this this board, I believe, definitely will be adjusted on site. We'll have to see. That's part of the thing is not being there, not having it there. It's hard to know 
where everything's going to land. Each one slightly different potential. Yeah. So now the brick, mold, I believe that this one goes up behind and the brick mold will be more the defining factor, but mm -hmm. I always, you know, it's a lot easier to make a board smaller than it is to make a board <laughs> bigger. So I prefer to wait till I get to that point before committing to the So you're going to leave this size. in the bag. Yeah. And you just made a hole in the bag. So what is, yeah. is that the tube for the steam? Yeah, I just poke it with my finger. I found that this actually seals pretty well right around the, around the hole. Just goes in there. It's already bubbling. It's yeah, already. I turned it on a minute ago. This is just one of those little like suit steamers, you know, for getting wrinkles out. Okay. And I just pulled off the little steamer head and. So no I've been special using... equipment, just any kind of steam. Pretty much. I mean, there's 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 all different methods of steaming. Like I'm adding a little ammonia to the bag. I think it helps a little, but people do use steam boxes where they pressurize ammonia and a lot of times ammonia and water. There's all kinds of so ways. E explain again, the ammonia dissolves the cell structure or? It doesn't necessarily it dissolve it. It, it, there's a, I think there's a hydrogen bond between the fibers of the wood that's kind of like the glue that holds it together mm -hmm. and so uh just moistening it helps soften the fibers so that they don't want to so it's easier more flexible but the steam actually and and the uh, ammonia uh i believe the ammonia actually basically breaks loose the the bond the hydrogen bond between the fibers of the wood so that it can then be adjusted and then once that evaporates off and it cools down then the it re that boundary bond. forms yeah and that's what so holds it some chemistry involved in this yeah not just yeah. physics okay you can see the bag is starting oh, to fill hot. up it's yeah very hot yeah. to the touch gets hot it's starting to steam up it's going all that way let's see let me get some going and then what yeah, I usually not, do. It's not getting down on this. Yeah, I'll turn it this way. It'll, much. And then I take some some of these moving blankets and put over top of it to give it some insulation. Just to hold that heat in and yeah. let it work. Especially when it's cooler out like today. And I'll let this sit for at least 30 minutes, maybe a little longer to get to heat and then start to put clamps on it and then I just keep adjusting the clamps and coming back every you know 30 minutes or 15 minutes and adding more pressure you can kind of feel in the clamps how much you know if it's moving smoothly so you get the resistance or, you get you feel when yeah you're you can kind of tell clamps, if you're going so you too fast just kind of have it that's how I do it You've been doing it long enough. You have the touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all a learning process. The, you know, each piece is a little different. The grain, you know, it's really good to have nice straight grain. So go through and pick the boards that have the best grain. What about differences the, in species of wood? Yeah. For, uh, so from what I've learned, it's the uh, evergreens don't really respond to steam bending as far as I can show you a piece I did because I have used steam to bend evergreen but we use sort of a dual process where we steam it to help get that curve in it but then we also layer up and glue it with epoxy so the same thing like I was telling you one has to stretch and one has to shrink mm -hmm. if you cut layers and and glue them together in that shape then they they won't go back because and i'll show you a piece okay. where you can see where all the pieces start out at the same length but as you push it down this one will be sticking out further we had, we had that lesson in um one of the videos on the basement because the 
floor joist rotted. Okay. And so the whole kitchen ceiling sunk down like that. Yeah. What it did, that movement popped the bond between the tile and the subfloor. Okay. Because they were bending at different. Yeah. Same same issue with principle. the arc and yeah. the same principle. They bent and were different levels, and it popped that bond and actually yeah. broke them free. So they've, if they've watched all the videos, they've had a lesson <laughs> in that. <laughs> so I have used steam bin to, to do uh, evergreens. While this is percolating, we can go take a look at it. All right. This is a pretty tight radius. So it's got three, so we, got three pieces. No, we got like... Oh, wait, wait. Oh, you can see them down eighth. here. Yeah. You can see down here. So they all started off the same length. But as you bend them, that's how much it would have to stretch the out. If on this thickness of a board, that's how much it would have to stretch, stretch. the outside yeah. or compress the inside. It would have to do that compression the whole way through. So to get this tight of radius, we have to cut layers and glue them together. For those that didn't watch it, go back and watch the video, the arc nemesis, I call it, <laughs> because arches are complicated geometrically. We're going, but I'm gonna follow. <laughs> this is a failed, a failed attempt to bend a piece for the opera house on the bottom trim. This is evergreen longleaf pine, river recovery. River recovered wood is harvested old growth logs that sank to the bottom of the river or lake, or it can refer to logs used in construction of water related structures like piers and bridges. Some estimates say that 10% of all lumber harvested and floated down the river for milling sank somewhere along the way. That's a lot of timber over the years down at the bottom of waterways. Old growth timbers always been prized. These logs, prior to logging, usually grew close together and competed for sunshine and water, which contributed to their slow growth, not like modern lumber today. That slow growth created closely spaced rings that gave the wood a tighter grain and made it strong and dense. Modern lumber just doesn't have the same quality. When trees are submerged in rivers, they don't rot due to low oxygen levels that slow down decay. In deep rivers, cold temperatures are also a deterrent to rot. Harvesting ancient logs from rivers and lakes is practiced all over the world today. One thing you can tell is if you got knots or anything like that, it creates a spot where it's not going to want to bend evenly. Mm -hmm. But then this was also bent in a 90 and you can see it did hold some bend. That came back. Yeah. So when I did the original piece, we actually, you know, layered up multiple pieces. And so we steamed them all first, then took them off and glued them all together. So now they'll, they'll stay. I haven't gotten a quote from y'all yet, but obviously once the alcove is put back together, it had all that wood wainscoting that covered the whole thing and it was all curved. Yeah. But some of what you could see on the back side of that is they actually cut it. Yeah. Relief, relief relief cuts the yeah. pressure yeah yeah left to look at and save but have a piece or two yeah well that that's also like an in this was supposed to be an outside curve so mm -hmm. this would be the part that was seen and you can see here it also it broke right there because it was trying to stretch that outside and we had a knot so so were you successful eventually? Oh yeah. 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 No, it's you can go check it out at the opera house. It looks looks great. See another one of my pieces being worked on there. Yeah. Just the smoothing one of the edges off a little bit. So you use some pretty strong filler. Sand and this is down. going to be painted on the oh, yeah. outside. So this is also an extra because it popped, I went ahead and made new ones. But this one we I tried steam bending it with the uh, with the profile already cut into it, mm -hmm. and that doesn't that doesn't work very well. That's again this one I didn't do a compression. Uh, I didn't have the metal around it because it had the because it had this uh, profile. I couldn't I couldn't put metal across the front of it. Mm -hmm. So all the other pieces that I did, I ended up using a compression bend. And we cut this after. after. 
so that way they all came so out. So even with all of your skill and experience, sometimes it's still trial and error on projects because yeah. each one is a little bit unique and different. Absolutely. And you just have to try and see, like, you know, if it would have bent nicely, then we could just do it all this way and it would be a little simpler. Mm -hmm. But it didn't, I wasn't happy with the result. So we like, okay, let's change it up a little. And it, it worked really well to use the compression in the, the jig on the, I think he showed you last time on the video, the, mm -hmm. the jig to cut that, yes. that mm -hmm. profile. After about 30 minutes, we went back to check on the steaming process. It's getting hot. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh wow. Yeah. That is It'll hot. burn you. That is hot. <laughs> Clamp number one. This one just kind of helps just keep <laughs> keep everything, yeah, keep everything in place so it doesn't move around on me too much. Put one on each side. Okay, so we're gonna go down. What is that about eight inches? Five, in, five inches. Five inches. Five inches. Start off with these at first. Then I kind of leave them on there as safety in case the clamps pop off and it wants to go flying. I'll take these clamps off later, but I put these on just to keep everything sort of lined up. The more you can keep things under control as you're doing this, the, the easier it, it, it can get out of control pretty easy. You can kind of see right here, it's a lot, lot softer than, than it was. That's, oh, yeah. that's bending pretty, flex. pretty yeah. easily with, that's a, Seven eighths SIPO. So that's the that's wood. the wood, yeah. So it starts out clear. Can you reuse that, or do you just dispose of it? I was thinking about uh, actually letting it distill and seeing if I could keep the the color. Make your own stain. Yeah, or something out of it. I don't know. Also, I'll start. Oof, that's that's rich. You can smell that ammonia. It's not great to get too much of that. <clears throat> but I'll make a hole in either side to let the steam. Once it once it warms up, I'll let the steam flow. Okay, so you've got. So uh, it's really we've already got it bent. Like we're down the. Just with like the, two inches, just, just with, with the, the strap. strap. So and this is you, just you to can, hold it again, stabilize everything and keep it from moving. Yeah, that's keeping it straight on here so I don't have to worry about it twisting. If you, I was having some of that last time. This one is really, I mean, it's, it's, I can just bend it down with my hand yeah. right now, there. almost all the way there. Yeah. Less than I'm an hitting, inch. Yeah, I'm hitting on the clamps over here. So you can tell it's, it's definitely doing its thing. I think I can take these off now. Whoop, whoop, maybe not. Let's see. I'm going to put some clamps on. And then I have these angled pieces. These help for the uh, clamps not to uh, slide. 
Is that what clamping oh, okay. at an so angle? Okay, so it gives it a perpendicular. Uh, yeah, exactly. Lever. So then here we can. There's so many <laughs> tricks of the trade. And do you have to put a stop clamp on your angle to keep it from sliding out? No, once no. once once it's in there, it stays pretty well. Now the trick is clamping it. Because as soon as you clamp one, then the other ones loosen up. I'm gonna put some on this side too. Right. While he's doing that, I'm going to back up a little bit because we were talking with the mic off and Evan was telling me he does all kinds of creative things that he likes to build and create. And one thing he does is metal casting. And we have hardware missing and we have some window sash lift that we might have to cast. So is that something you said you did some brass casting before? I've done some bronze, some brass. Mostly aluminum, but I've done brass and bronze. Well, these are. Smaller. Are they originally cast pieces? I think so. They're okay. they're smaller than my cell phone. Okay. And they're you know thin, oh, at the no. thickest part of the metal, three eighths of an inch thick. Hold on a second. I got I got some issues here. You I need have to, to do some thinking. You can't talk right now. <laughs> figured out. All right, there it goes. Just compression. There you go. I don't want to do that. Okay, we are. I'm going to show you this ingenious trick he did. So when you clamp here, here your clamp can't sit flat so he added this wedge to create parallel surfaces so that the clamp can seat fully And these were actually also used on your sill, so they're they're double purpose. All right. It's so it's pretty fine. close right here, mm -hmm. but I don't mind. This is actually I, I should have probably overcut this radius so it bent more. I don't think we'll have a problem with it, but it does have spring back, so there is gonna be I'm gonna have to pull in a little bit of force, you know, with with it like this so i don't really mind if it if this side is like a little bit more poking out here but it mm -hmm. should just help it be more of a tighter radius so when i actually put it together i think it'll actually work to my benefit okay. to let it do that well thanks for letting me come watch. yeah i'm anxious to see it all put together and installed <laughs> i'm enjoying it's it our a lot. first Thing we're rebuilding so it's pretty exciting <laughs> i've been enjoying the process a lot thank you a huge big thank you to mcnack construction and evan for having me back today i had to swallow hard when i got the estimate for rebuilding these windows but now that i seen what's involved in the process and just the cost of the materials alone i think i got a real bargain i could not be happier you don't want to miss it when these guys come install these windows on site. So be sure and subscribe and turn on your notifications because you don't want to miss any of the goings on here at the Lee Kempner House. Remember, we're a nonprofit dedicated to restoring and preserving this house and we could use your help. So check out our website, LeeKempnerHouse.org for ways you can donate or volunteer. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.